Hey investors, Joe here. The market is looking pretty heavy right now and with the tide on our side, so to speak, now might be a good time to do some swing trades to the short side. Let me give you a little bit of short trading strategy, strategery, as George W. would say. And then I've got, let's see, about five or so symbols here that I was looking at that look like they are um, breaking or about to break to the downside. Let's see, I've been investing since 1996, member of Minervini Private Access, member of MarketSmith for many, many years, um, et cetera. So I do have some trading experience, but this is just my opinion, not trading advice. You need to do so at your own risk. So first of all, let's talk about um, the benefits of trading to the short side. Many people are afraid of shorting or they are uncomfortable or they feel like it's un-American, which um, we're not going to address in this video, but it, it benefits the market because it adds liquidity. There you go. I just addressed it. <clears throat> the, the benefit, and it's a big one, is that stocks move much faster to the downside than to the upside. And um, there's an old saying, stocks take the stairs up and the elevator down. Yeah. Why is that? Because of one word, panic. People panic and they want out. Whether they have one share or a million shares, they sell in a hurry and that causes stocks to plunge. There are, as you know, dangerous overnight gap ups. A company can get acquired overnight, again, with a gap up. Um, the meme crew can gang up and decide to pile into some um, you know, stock that's falling apart like Bed Bath & Beyond or GameStop and run it up. But um, done carefully, shorting can be very lucrative and a heck of a lot of fun too. So let's talk about uh, a few strategies. Okay, so here's four. Number one, make sure you are swimming in the direction of the tide. The tide's going out, swim out. The tide's coming in, swim in. That goes for um, the long side and the short side. So what I'm saying is when the market is hot, generally, um, unless it's a anomalous case like, um, like Nikola back in the day, you don't want to be short when the market is hot. Now, right now, September 6th, we've got a little window of about two weeks, almost two weeks, until Jay Powell um, addresses the country regarding a potential rate hike again. So in my opinion, the market is going to be sideways slash choppy slash uh, downward until September 20th. The perfect little window to do some swing trade shorts and then we'll see what he says on the 20th. That might spark a rally or it could push us farther to the downside. Well, we're not talking about that right now. So <clears throat> make sure the tide's on your side. Right now, I believe it is sideways to down. Two, uh, you need to trade smaller because of the higher risk. Because of those dangers, you need to trade smaller. So ask yourself, um, what um, dollar amount are you comfortable with losing overnight? If one of these things gaps up 50%, are you going to be comfortable losing that amount of money? Um, because you're going to want to close the position if you get caught with a gap up. And by the way, they're rare, but um, relatively speaking, but they do happen. So trade smaller. Trade a lot smaller. I trade, I trade much smaller. Um, and if you're making small dollar amount trades and you keep flipping that coin, so to speak, keep turning those trades over, you can actually make quite a bit of money. Second one is trade smaller. <laughs> that was the first one. Second one, trade faster. Whereas with some of my long positions, I will try to hold a piece of the position for a year or more. Um, with shorts, I almost always take half off at 8 to 10%, and then I close out the other half, you know, at 20%, 15%, just anywhere with a nice little gain, and I walk away a winner, and I'm, I'm happy. Um, to be out of there with a win. 
Now again, you might realize you are on to the Peloton of 2023, which actually, which actually might still be a good short. But for the most part, just take take little swing trades of um, you know a handful of days or a handful of weeks, and leave the big gains, the big percentage gains, to the long side. Lastly, check the investor relations um, on the company website and look out for business events earnings announcements, product announcements, clinical trial announcements. Those are things that the stock could potentially gap up on. So, of course, there's way more. William William O'Neill has a great book on shorting called um, How to, how to short, what is it called? How to Make Money Selling Short. That's a great re- reference. Stan Weinstein in his book, um, what is it called? Profit in bull and bear markets, something along those lines. He has a great chapter on shorting as well. And I, I put a link in the description to both of those books. Now, let's look at um, a few symbols that I just came across that are looking pretty shortable. By symbols, I guess I mean companies. Okay, let's look at some potential short opportunities. And by the way, I have a Patreon where I show my portfolio and focus list every weekend and do blog posts and so forth. There's a link to that in the description below if you're interested. Let's look first at two um, stocks that Mark Minervini is shorting right now on Minervini Private Access, and then I'll show you a few um, other opportunities. So the first one that he's short on is DKS, Dick's Sporting Goods. So you have the stock broke down on the biggest volume of the year on earnings day, you got a whole bunch of overhead supply, and then you got the, um, tradi- maybe not traditional, the common event, a common occurrence of a dead cat bounce. So um, value investors rush in, they buy thinking they're getting a, good, getting a good value. It runs up approximately to the bottom of the gap, and then um, the swing traders take their profits, the value investors get nervous and they sell, and it rolls over. Sometimes it'll only come down to, in this case, 106 or so, but a lot of times it will break through that and make a nice little low of, you know, 20 or even 30% lower. So you try to time it to where you short it um, when you feel that the dead cat balance is over. And that uh, admittedly is a bit of an art. And in hindsight, it's always really easy. The, the, Breakdown day was right here, September 5th. And I believe he put on his short a few days earlier, maybe right about there. And and if you do that, and then the chart improves, in this case, deteriorates, then you could do a second buy right here. Half position here, second position here. Take half off at 10%, and then I'll take the other half off um, 15 or 20%, or when you see signs of the stock bottoming, that's beyond the scope of this video. The other one that he that he is short is Wingstop. You've got um, moving from a stage two, stage three. Here's your stage four rollover breakdown below the 200 day. The 200 days flattening out and rolling down. Um, the 200 day on, the, on DKS is still in an uptrend. We we want to see that curl down anyway. Uh, so this is called a ledge. Stock breakdowns on high volume. It tries to recover, but the buying power is just so weak. It just ends up sliding sideways, sliding sideways. And what you can do is you can buy near the upper edge of the wedge and set a time stop. And Minervini did that. He he bought, I believe, right here for a half position. And then if you're right and it breaks down, then you add that second piece right here um, when it breaks, in this case, 160. If you buy within the ledge, that's fine, but you set yourself a price stop of you know five to seven, eight percent, and a time stop. If it slides sideways for more than uh, you know three or four weeks, then that is abnormal. Ledges should break down before that. But now a ledge is not a cup with a handle, a ledge is down here beneath a bunch of supply, ideally beneath the 200 day like that. Okay, let's look at a few uh, other potential ideas here. 
Dish, now, I haven't looked to see if these are hard to borrow. If these are hard to borrow, then you get charged um, pretty hefty interest to be short them. And my, in general, I don't short stocks that are hard to borrow. I only go short if it's easy and cheap to short the, st short the shares. Oh, and by the way, you can set a stop just like to the long, long, long side. You just set what's called um, a buy stop. And so if you were short, let's go back to wing. If you were short uh, wing at 160, you could put a set a buy stop at 168 or so, and then it will cover for you when it hits 168, if it hits 168. So Dish Network, tons of overhead supply, Fundamentally, um, cable TV is dying, isn't it? I don't have cable. Do you have cable? I don't know anyone who has cable anymore. Um, this is an example of a, a pretty wide and loose ledge that worked nonetheless. But what we are looking at right now is here's a ledge that's forming. Definitely there's some buyers here around six. But if this bounces for a few more days, breaks to the downside, um, in my opinion, the buyers will have dried up and will get a decent move to the downside. Most likely. We're just playing the odds here, right? Um, yeah, alternatively, you could buy within this little ledge here. It's not very developed. I'd like to see it go sideways for um, a handful of days first. So if you buy within this ledge, you might get stuck in there for a while. Set a mental time stop. So if you're buying it now, 9.6. Tell yourself if it doesn't break down by 9.13, I'm going to um, cut bait, so to speak, and get out. Okay, what else? OI, Owens, Illinois. This is a container company, glass containers. Uh, by the way, I'm ignoring fundamentals right now. I'm just doing this uh, via the technicals. And remember, fundamentals often look great on stocks right before they take a big downturn. So don't let the fundamentals seduce you into staying in the stock. So again, this is kind of a variation of a ledge. We've got here's your stage two, here's your stage three top, big breakdown beneath the 200 day on big volume, a little bit of a dead cap bounce, got resistance on the 200 day, has tried again to penetrate the 200 day, wasn't able to do it, rolled over again, two consecutive days of pretty decent volume. Today it closed near its low. So you could put on half now, half when it breaks beneath the ledge, or you could wait for it to break beneath the ledge at 19, um, maybe 18.75, something like that. Which should you do? You, you know, there's no free lunch. Either you get in at a better price, less likely to succeed, or a worse price, but more likely to succeed. Uh, you know, it's entirely up to you. OPRX, computer medical software. I, I generally avoid biotechs when shorting because um, drug companies can be can make these wild moves to the upside. But this is a computer software company. Let's look. So this looks quite a bit like um, DKS, Dick Sporting Goods. This is OPRX. You've got a ton of overhead supply way beneath the 50 day and the 200 day. This is a 200 day simple moving average, 50 day simple moving average, huge gap down, uh, probably on earnings. This is a serial gapper actually, gap down. Well, that's not quite a gap down. That's a David Ryan turn. Anyway, um, a bunch of sellers, here's your dead cat bounce. Now, sometimes these things will bounce up all the way to the bottom of the gap or all the way to the top of the gap. It's, I mean, to an extent, it's a guessing game or an art, if you will. But in this case, because of the weakness in the market, if it opens strongly to the downside, we could make an educated guess that it's rolling over and we could try it right there with a stop just beneath, uh, just above this rollover point, 8.9, something like that. Looks like it's getting a few buyers here. We will jury is still out. It would actually improve if it ran up to 10 and then rolled over harder. That would be more reliable, um, more likely to be a successful short opportunity. Peloton, uh, expensive clothing racks, right? Uh, comment below if you got that joke. Sideways, dead price action, big gap down, probably on earnings. 
dead gap bounce that just came and filled the gap. Big rollover on big volume. I would have loved to have got in today. I'm not in. If we can get a day where it goes inside and then starts to fade again inside this candle, I would be willing to go short there. Some of these are pretty low priced. Might be, they might be hard to borrow, um, but your broker will tell you when you do preview, when you do trade preview. But yeah, that is looking very shortable. This has been a short all year, not all year, all two years long. Let's look at it. Five year chart. Yeah, look at that. Head and shoulders top. Here's your neckline. Um, came back, made another shoulder, and away you go from 100 to 6. Wow, that's painful. If you are a diamond hands person, I don't know. Don't be a diamond hands person. Do what the chart tells you to do, not what people on the internet tell you to do, including me. SE, I believe this is a software company. Yeah, internet. Same kind of thing. This is another dead cap bounce play. Tons of overhead, uh, overhead supply beneath the 200, beneath the 50. Huge break, biggest uh, down volume of the year. Here's our dead cap bounce. Is it done bouncing? This um, big update today gives me pause. I'm, I would wait on this one, see if it comes up higher, maybe to 42 or 44, and then rolls over. It looks a little premature now. Now, if it undercuts, comes down here to 30, what is that, 36, 36.25, certainly you could try it or put on a third side, a third of a position. Star Surgical, STAA, they make some sort of implants for eye surgery. It's obviously not going well. Um, same thing, beneath the averages, gap down, a um, little bit of a dead cap bounce here has rolled over hard, and now it's coming to new lows. I'd like to see it ledge out a little bit and then start to break again. That's where I would buy it. Here's a wing. I already talked about wing. Zoom Info Technologies, ZI, so same thing. Beneath the averages, this is a, a classic ledge. It's a little bit loose, it's a little bit wide and loose, but regardless, if it undercuts right here, I would put on a half position and then a full position once it, once it makes a new low. Now, if it breaks to the upside, then we just close our position, right? If, if it makes a new high to 19, we just close our position it's a small loss because we're playing small positions and we um, lick our wounds. We don't have to be right every single time. We, we only have to be right about 40% of the time because when we're right, we're going to get um, on average a 15% gain. And when we're wrong, we're going to take, um, you know, a 5 to 7% loss. We want to flip that coin as many times as we can. Those are my thoughts. Um, now, I'm probably not going to be long, probably not. Gonna, not Probably not going to be short anything going into September 20th, the Fed meeting, because that could kick off a big rally. If I am short anything, I'll reduce the positions, tighten up my stops, take take most off the table. Yeah, that's it. Check out check out my Patreon. If you want to do one more thing, if you want to do some um, fundamental research, I encourage you to check out my partner, Seeking Alpha Premium that has fundamental articles on all these stocks. We were just, let's look at poor Peloton here. So you pull up Peloton, it has all of the recent news, it has transcripts, press releases, but what I, I like most is, is these analysis articles. Um, sell, sell, hold, hold, sell, sell, hold, hold, buy. And we could read, um, any of these articles and once you get to know which are the best analysts you can follow those those analysts let's see peloton's financial challenges mount we could read the article if we're in a hurry we can just read the summary so yeah check out seeking out a premium for more information link in the description uh, good luck everybody be careful out there the market is uh, tricky september is the weakest month of the year stay light and tight